We have a couple properties in our store. Let's select them and update our component. If we go back to our diagram, and now what we'll do is we'll create a second selector that will select the name and the is sent success property. And then we'll just update the view whenever that information changes in our store. We'll be making changes to three files. If we open up the selectors and open up the customer support selector, we'll be working in here and also we'll be working in two other files inside the pages customer support. And this is our form that we were looking at on the front end and open up the HTML. We'll be doing some work in there and the TS file. Let's start off with the selector file. The first thing we'll do is create a brand new interface. This is what we're going to be returning every time we call our new selector that we're creating. So we'll be returning a name and we'll be returning a Boolean is sent success. Now we can create our selector. I could change this around since we're not going to be using this anymore, but I'm going to leave this for future reference and just create a brand new selector right below our interface. I'm going to use this snippet generator. If you hit a slash NGRX, hit enter, it just generates you the snippet. If you haven't seen the last video, I'm using a plugin for Visual Studio Code, an extension, and I'll open up my extensions, and that is called Angular Snippets version 9 made by John Papa. That's the snippet generator that I'm using. Now, if we go back here, this is going to have a very long selector name. I'm going to call this Select Customer Support View Model. And I'm using the Create Selector. And then here we want to pull in our feature, our slice of the store. I'll go ahead and copy this, add that down here. And then don't forget to pass this into your function. And that's the last parameter. And I'll change this to state. And I'll save this so it formats it for me. And what's amazing about this, you could pile up different features and different prior selectors that you have already created in here. Now, we're not actually going to do this. I'm going to remove this in a second, but I just want to show you that you can do this. And we will be doing this in later modules. But for example, we have this select name here. You could pass that in here as well, just by piling them up below your feature. So let's just add it right here. And then make sure you add on the end there. And then you could pass this into your function as well. And I'll just add that in as the last parameter. And it's a string. So I'll call it name. And it's going to be a string. Just like that. But we don't really need the name in this case. The reason is, is we're getting the name from our feature itself. I just want to show you, you could do that. I'm going to go back and remove this. Remove this. Now, what do we want to do right here? We want to return this object, this interface. And I'm going to add that right here. Just be very descriptive of what I'm returning. And I'll go ahead and copy this. So we're returning this interface every time this selector gets called. And then here, I'm going to add in a brackets. And we're going to return this object and we're getting an error now because we're, we're not following by the rules here so we need to return a name and is sent success so i'll go ahead and add in the name and we're going to get that from the state dot name and then also the is sent success and we're getting that from the same place as well now we just set up our selector now let's set up our component now that we created our selector and we're getting everything we want from our store, now we're ready to update the view. Inside the customer support component, open that up. In a prior video, we selected the name by using our select name selector. We set it to this, this name variable. And we're going to do something exactly the same. Right here, we'll, we'll create a new variable. And the difference now is it's going to return us the entire view model, the name, everything from that store. We're going to just store it in one variable like this. And what we're expecting back is that interface we created in the selector. And we're expecting this object back. If we go back here, let's bring that in from our selector file. And we just set that up. We're not going to need this anymore. And now instead of selecting from our select name, we get rid of this and add this instead. So now we're going to set this view model variable to whatever we get from calling our selector. Let's bring in this selector. 
And as you can see, it's getting pretty messy up here again. So let's clean this up. And this is a lot cleaner way of doing it. Now we can just use this. So I'll copy this. Make sure we add this onto the beginning here. That's our interface and then our selector. All right, so we just set up our TS file and whenever our store gets updated, this will update this automatically. Now let's set up this variable within our HTML. We can save this file, open up the customer support HTML. And now we want to pull in our new variable and I'll pull that right in at the top. And we'll use the async, subscribe to it right away. And then we'll be using this variable now throughout this entire template. And whatever you pull into this variable now, you'll have access to it through this one variable, VM variable. Now let's make some changes in here. Like instead of name async, we could change this to VM name now. So VM dot name. And then instead of is send success, we'll use VM is sent success change this as well and this also and that should update our view save it and let's check it out in the browser now everything should work exactly the same our actions should dispatch and also our store should be updated but now we're going to be getting the information from our store by using a selector if we hit send we dispatch both of our actions. We're passing in a payload of false. And when we get false, we see this error. And I could tell everything is working, like we're getting our information by using our selector because we're seeing this red banner now. Now, if we enter in some information like a name and hit send, and now we're getting back true and it's updating the view with the correct feedback, and we're still getting the name by using our selector. Now in the next video, let's finish up this module. Like for example, right here, when we click on the X, now this isn't working. We'll create a new action for that. So whenever the user clicks on this button, we'll dispatch an action and we'll clear out our store. And we'll do that in the next video.